All right, I started the broadcast, but we're on break, so okay. we're good. Right here from Hout Field in Clayton, we've got a wonderful game on tap between the Glassboro Bulldogs and the Clayton Clippers. I'm Dad Wilkins here with Chris Baker. Vincent poked a little bit out of you. He's going to be our producer today. Glassboro and Clayton have taken the field. They're going to do the coin toss very shortly. And while we are on a bit of a rush schedule for broadcast number 201 here on Dan Wilkins Broadcasting, Chris, you've been doing a lot of research going into this game in these two Group 1 powerhouses. What are your, what are your thoughts going in? Uh, yeah, pretty much, um, you know, Clayton, very powerful team, very physical. They run the wing T offense. Uh, it's actually funny they run the wing T offense against a former Delaware player. Shout out Tubby Raven. Um, uh, Glassboro, very good mix of. Um, have yeah, have written down here. Very good mix of seniors and underclassmen. Um, senior, senior year, Karan White stands out to me. Uh, underclassmen, sophomores, and freshmen. Uh, the amazing Sabs, honestly, you know, Keon Sab, Glassboro native now in Michigan. His little brothers, Amari, he's a sophomore, and Xavier, he's a freshman. Just playmakers straight up. You get the ball in their hands. Positive things are going to happen. Up front, you know, Glassboro has another big defensive lineman, Brandon Simmons, who's a sophomore. Kid just lives in the backfield. Uh, Clayton, they got the two workhorse backs, and they're going to grind you down with Ike Taylor, and then followed up with, you know, very good athletic back in Demetrius Williams, who is, I think, top five or something like that in the state in rushing touchdowns and possibly rushing yards. I have to double check that, though. But a uh, very talented left handed quarterback, and don't see too many lefties in South Jersey, Ian Gannon, who's a senior in his Swan Song campaign. Other than that, it should be a pretty good game. Two very classic Tri County, old Tri County, I'm pretty sure, classic division rivals with Glassboro and Clayton. For each other's backyard, so looking forward to a good one here, Dan. Well, it's going to be a great one, Chris, indeed. We're going to bring our attention down to the field for the National Anthem. With our senior, Elijah Ortiz, to sing the National Anthem to honor America. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs burst in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there 
All right, well, a wonderful National Anthem performance, and now we're going to bring the top performance of the night, Clayton and Glassboro football, to center stage right here. Let's take a look at the game picks for tonight presented by Tommy D's Home Improvement Surplus. Three out of the four of us chose uh, the Glassboro Bulldogs. Our producer, Vincent Folks, went with Clayton on this one, and I think, honestly, Chris, it could go either way. But here we are from Haupt Field in Clayton for coverage of the West Jersey Football League and the I mean wow I mean we you know we've been uh, rushing around a little bit here so I apologize if I'm stumbling over my words a little bit but we got here at 620 and we ran into some traffic over down near 42 and 295 but it all worked out in the end and we still got the broadcast on time so again I'm here with Vincent Folks and Chris Baker it's gonna be a fun one Black chair out. You kind of want to sit in the middle. Yeah, 12. Yeah, that's fine. Chris, move that bag. Move that bag back. Glassboro will kick off. Clayton will receive. That's how we're going to start tonight's ball game. Follow the action. 48 minutes of West Jersey Football League action. Set away. That one goes back. Picked up at the 30, and that'll be a knee by Clayton. And we'll get underway. Number seven, Michael Robinson, down the ball for the Clippers. They have a first and 10 from their own 29. Are we on this side? All right, sorry folks, we've kind of been running all over the place. First and ten from the 29 for Clayton as we kick this one underway. This one's going to be run out to the left by Clayton's number six. Oh, no, I think the ball got taken out there. Glassboro with a big stop. Demetrius Williams on the run. Ball almost came out, but Clayton's going to hang on to it. The so loss about three, and it's going to be second and 13 from the 26. Second and 13 from the 26. Roll out to the left, or ra rather to the right by Williams, and he's going to get a couple of yards out of that to make up for the loss, and it's going to be third down. Number six, Williams running again for the Clippers. He's tackling the play by number 12, Tyron Wright. Now third and eight Clippers, balls in the run 31. Thank you. 
Third and eight from the 31 for the Clippers. Ten thirty, just getting started here in the first quarter. Seven oh three, p.m. here at Hauptfield. Here comes a handoff to number five, Isaac Taylor, the senior, and that's going to be a three and out for Clayton. Oh, well, it's like there are several people who have to move <laughs> their cars tonight. That's at least the second time we've had an announcement. Fourth and six. The Saab brothers are going to go back to return this punt. As that's going to be a short punt, it's going to land right at the 47. And it's going to stay, it's going to roll to the sideline, and it will get out at the 42 for uh, a pickup by number 34 for Clayton. That will be Colby Carr, the senior. Michael Stowe, please move your, please car your blocking, the class pro, us. Michael Stowe, please move your, please car your blocking, the class pro, us. Remember, the Glassboro squad, they've got the Saab brothers, including Amari Saab, who's got several Power 5 offers. He could basically go to whatever school he wanted, you know, give or take a couple. But he's going to be a force to be reckoned with, as we've seen in some of the other games that the Bulldogs have had media presence for this year. Here's a handoff to Saab, to the right side. He's going to stay on his feet, and he is down at the 50. As a late flag comes in... Let's see what the flag's all about. Referees are going to talk this one over. Let's see what the white cap has to say. It's a late hit by Clayton out of bounds, and that's going to move him along for an automatic first down. Ball's going to be on the 38 for Glassboro. Glassboro 2-2 two two this year with Timmy Breaker. Had a 27-7 win over the Burlington City Blue Devils to open up the regular season. And then back-to-back -back close losses to Middle Township and Pleasantville at home. Here comes a run up the middle. Here comes a big one, but there's a flag in the backfield after the run by number 20, Davin Barr. Like this one might be against the visitors. So illegal motion against Glassboro. That one's going to bring him back. Maybe a five yard penalty. Well, they benefited greatly from that <laughs> illegal hit out of bounds, but we've seen like six plays and already have had two or three flags, so might be just one of those nights with a lot of penalties. I don't know. Only three minutes into this game, so you never know, truly. Here's a handoff to the right side by Barr and a duo of Claytoners, including number five. Isaac Taylor and number 36, Aiden Fajardo, with the tackles. Or excuse me, Colby Carr on that one as well. They combined for the tackle for a loss, and it's going to be second down. As they're going to set this one up at the 43. So it's still... But it's second down and 15. 
There's no game on the play at second down and 15 for the Colts. Hand off to the left. Here's an open spot. Uh -oh. Around the 25, he gets another late hit, and he's going to be out of bounds. Take it in by number zero, Xavier Saab, the freshman. And you've got Xavier, the freshman, Amari, the sophomore. Probably one of the <laughs> probably one of the most. Uh, I guess you could say South Jersey football royalty, if you will. I mean, they, they've they got some of the best in the business, but this one's going to be bringing them back. Looks like there was a holding call on Glassboro. You want to switch? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I don't, I don't know. When we... When we Second and 17 after the holding penalty. From the 45, Glassboro still in a good position, but they could have been in a much better position if it weren't for that. In the I form, handoff to Barr. He spins around, gets a breakaway, and he's down inside the 35. No flags on the play. Sims on the tackle there for Clayton. As we were saying, Glassboro, they've had wins at the bookends. They beat Burlington and Woodstown, both on the road, but they are 0-2 in their home matches this year. Middle Township 24-22, and then Plensville 20-14 for the rest of their schedule after tonight. They play Pensgrove and Deptford at home, and then close out the season with a win, or excuse me, sorry, with a game at Buna on the 20th. QB under center, here comes the handoff to Barr. He's got, oh! Colby Carr comes in on that one along with number 62. Luca Mazio on the tackle is gonna force a fourth down. A fourth down and quite a long one. From the 36 yard line. Now we are going to have a timeout on the field by Glassboro. We're going to take a quick break. 6.36 left in the quarter. Fourth down, they're going for it. Here comes the pass up the middle, and it's dropped by Saab. They went for it on fourth, didn't get it. 
And Clayton's going to take over on a turnover on downs. Hold on, folks. Our camera froze. There we go. <laughs> Clipper's going to take over here. Zero, zero score. Both teams failed on their first drive. Here comes the handoff up the middle and goes down after the run by Demetrius Williams. Number six, Demetrius Williams on the carry for the Clippers. That was a two yard carry by Williams. It's now second down and eight. Ball is at the 38. As we said, Glassboro this year two and two, Clayton three and one with John Chamberlain. At the head, they had a 34-12 win over Kip Cooper, 26-21 over Lower Cape May, Buna 41-7, and then a 45-16 loss last week at Middle Township. Here's a handoff up the middle. Going to get a little bit of a better momentum than I thought he was going to get. And they're going to move the chain for a Clayton first down after the run by Ike Taylor. And for the rest of the season... Clayton's got four games left, at least three in the regular season. They are at Pleasantville next week. They play Maple Shade on October 13th. They close out the year with a game versus Cumberland on the 20th, and then they play Pittman in the 98th annual Thanksgiving game between Clayton and Pittman, which we will have as our football closer in 2023 right here from Haupt Field. Here comes the handoff to the left. Taylor gets knocked out of bounds and thrown down the Clayton sideline. I'm surprised that there was no flag on that one. But that is going to make it second down. So now they're going to try it. Second and 13 after the loss. Handoff up the middle, gets past the 50 and gets maybe about half the distance to the first down marker. It's going to be third down. Number five, Mike Taylor on the carry again for the Clippers. Seven-yard carry by Taylor. It's now third down and six for the Clippers. The ball at the Glassboro 48. Third and mid-range from the 48. Man in motion for Clayton. Handoff up the middle. It's going to be a couple yards short of a first. Isaac Taylor with a couple of yards on that one. It's going to be fourth down. So this would be the third, fourth down in a row for these guys. Neither drive resulted in a score in the first go around. But now we're going to see what they can do here. It looks like no movement on the sidelines, so no real special teams unit out here. Here we go. Well, that might be for a loss, and it will be for a turnover on downs. Clayton's gonna get taken out of, <laughs> taken out there with number 21, Dominic Barr. And the second turnover on downs in a row for Clayton and Glassboro. It's been a good defensive game so far. Yeah, I mean, you, you just, right now what you're looking at, it's, it's basically something where uh, no team is really getting in charge and they keep getting defensive stops. 
So, I mean, right right now, what you need to look at is, I mean, the defenses are both obviously the judge or not, and it's really going to come up to some uh, play and, you know, really to get this game going underway. Right now, as you see, folks, both in the defense. Here comes a long pass down the sideline. It is dropped, knocked away by Williams, intended for Amari Saab, and that's going to be an incompletion. Christopher Foster tried to go all, all or nothing on that one, but ended up getting nothing. Hold on, folks, our camera froze again. Having a bit of tech issues here. We're in a tight space. That one's gonna go nowhere. The bar on the carry for Glassboro. Foster in the shotgun. He's going to try to get this one out. He's going to line. Oh, he almost lined it to the right. Fakes a screen. Tried to keep it himself, but got nowhere. And that's going to be another fourth down. I mean, considering the records that we had when these guys played each other last, you know, Glassboro and Clayton split the last four matchups 2-2. But the last time I think was 12-6 or something like that. It was a defense-led game. So now, question is for these guys is what are they going to be able to put together Looks like they're going to bring back out Christopher Foster and the guy who was on their kickoff, number 64, Demir Lassiter. I don't see him out there, so... Oh, no, he is, he's on the uh, right guard, so... Doesn't really seem to matter, though, because they're going to probably go for it here. It's exactly what I'm seeing. Fourth down. Foster lets it fly over the middle. It is incomplete in double coverage. Taken away by Clayton's number two. With that being Nate Washburn. And the Clippers are going to take over on downs again. This broadcast is brought to you by Tommy D's Home Improvement Surplus. The place to be for wholesale cabinets and countertops at heavily discounted rates compared to big box retailers. Visit today on the corner of Creek Road and Harding Avenue in their second in-person location in Belmar next to the 42 on-ramp. And in motion for Clayton. Here comes the handoff to number 12. That being Raymond Sims. Not going to get too far on that one. Going to be second down. No gain on the play in second and ten. Yeah, I'll send it to you. Yeah. A minute left in the first quarter. Still no score between Glassboro and Clayton. Here comes the handoff to the left. Taylor gets pulled at the jersey with a swarm of yellow, and that's going to be another fourth down. I mean, it just seems like nobody's been able to get any momentum. I mean, Glassboro had a, a little bit of momentum at the start of the quarter, but then they got all those flags that held them back, so they've got nothing to show for it right now. We'll see what they can get. Excuse me, going to be third and 13 for the Clippers with about 15 seconds left in the quarter. 
they if they time it right uh, no they're gonna call their guys off so that's gonna end the first quarter with no score between Glassboro and Clayton it's been a defensive brawl so far we'll be right back with three more quarters to go in Clayton And here we go, no score after one. We're gonna get back to it here in Clayton. And that's not gonna go anywhere. Clayton stopped on a third and 13, and I think they only made the problem worse. It's gonna be fourth down here. Down in Wasak on the play for a loss. Now fourth and 21 after that eight yard loss by Gannon. Number seven, Michael Robinson wants to punt for the Clippers. Special teams unit is out there. They're gonna send this one away. It's high, it's gonna take a good backspin there. They're gonna be picked up at the 30. We'll see what they can get. There's a flag. There's multiple flags coming in. And at the 40, he's taken down. We'll see what they have to say about it. Holding on the return team. Penalty is holding against Glassboro. So they're going to knock that one back. And even though their initial punt return wasn't all that great, I mean, they got to the 40, so it wasn't too bad, but could have been a lot better. We'll see what they can get now. I mean, it's just been back and forth punts and turnovers. There's just been so much. comes a handoff to the left side. That's gonna be a good breakaway by Glassboro and hit out of bounds. It's gonna be second down for the Bulldogs. Number three, Amari Saab. So Saab on the carry. Glassboro. By the way, some out of town scores. Winslow leads Ocean City 20-0. PVI leads Morristown 14-0 in the first. Collingswood trails Deptford 20 to 7 at the half. Delcy leads 
looks like uh, Cumberland, 7-0. And no good on that one. Number 20 bar carrying for the Bulldogs. That was a two yard carry. Don't Folks, don't forget him. tomorrow we go down the 295 and down 42 to Woodbury, where we'll be covering the Gloucester Lions and the Woodbury Thundering Herd from. Uh, big thanks to, uh, from Woodbury, excuse me. It, it's it's a uh, mess up here in the booth. So if I'm not on my A game, I know we've got a lot of people watching tonight. Uh, just keep in mind that <laughs> we were stuck in traffic, got here at 620, had a lot of hurdles along the way, and, uh, you know, just still getting settled in. As uh... So, again, apologies in that regard as we now have to fix the focus on the camera with a catch made. And he is down. I'm going to see if I can fix that. There we go. Took care of itself. Oh, boy. Sometimes it's not the player's night. And sometimes it's not the broadcaster's night either. <laughs> so, hey, it happens. It happens. But we're going to try to make the best out of it in the second half at least. But let's just get you up to speed with where we'll be next. We're going to do Gloucester and Woodbury tomorrow, 1030 a.m. start. Big thanks to Anthony Reagan and Dan Howie for having us out there. And then at 4 p.m. we'll be at the Jackson Adventure Complex covering college fall softball between the SUNY Purchase Panthers. SUNY as in State University of New York and Salem Community College. And we'll be doing two games for them at the Del Castle Complex in Wilmington, Delaware. Timeout is called on the field by Clayton. Their first of the night. Both teams have two left. We'll be right back after this 8.35, left and a half. Here comes a handoff by Glassboro coming back from the timeout. It was on fourth and second. We'll see if they either measure it. We'll see what they end up getting here. Number 20 bar on. That's going to be enough to move the chains after the carry by Barr. Looks like Matt Cosentino is here tonight couple of guys in the media. Chris Baker was here with us, but uh, we usually like to have three people in the booth, but there's not enough space for us to have three. <laughs> so we'll give him a uh, sideline report at the half. There is a handoff up the middle, getting leveled is Barr after the tackle by Clayton's number two, that being Nate Weisburn. Yeah, it's going to be a false start on the offense, so that play is going to be for naught. Or, excuse me, illegal shift. As a five yard penalty, bring up the first and 15 for Glassboro. The ball is at their own 31. At their own 31, even though they did get the first down, it's going to be first and 15 now. As Glassboro still scoreless along with their opponents in this one. Going to have an uphill battle for anybody to get on the board. Here comes a flip. Oh, ball is booted. And it looks like Glassboro is going to hang on to it. And now a late flag coming in. Was 
fumbled and recovered by Glassboro. There's a flag going to play. They're still talking it over here. 7.21, or rather 7.23 left in the half. Now it looks like they're going to break from the meeting. We'll see what they have to say about it. Holding on the defense. Well, now Clayton's going to have their backs against the wall. I thought that should be an automatic first down. Although I heard the public address announcer say blo uh, block in the back, but I thought that was the signal for holding. Yeah, that was the signal for holding. So I thought defensive holding was an automatic first down. But high school rules are different from the NFL, and I may be completely wrong on that. So they're going to line it up second and five. Oh, yeah, it, it is a first down. Yeah, first and five. That, that threw us off a little bit, that's for sure. And now here comes another flag. Oh, no, timeout. Sorry, timeout was called by Glassboro. <laughs> that threw me off. The reaction was thinking flag, 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 but no. <laughs> it's going to be a timeout by Glassboro. 647 left in the second quarter. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Garden State Pet Center is an independently owned full service pet store. Our specialty is promoting companionship between people and animals by providing the healthiest product choices available, including all natural foods, supplements that support and relieve health issues, and innovative products for pet parents. Our goal is to provide our customers with a relaxing environment, and while we're not striving to be the biggest store on the East Coast, we're striving to be the best. No other pet store will make you feel at home like we do. At Garden State Pet Center, we view pets as members of the family. We don't believe in fast, high pressure sales but instead matching up the right pet with the right owners as you are making a lifelong commitment. Together with our team members, we would like your visit to our store to be both enjoyable and educational. Simply drop in and take a look around. View the birds, reptiles, small animals, toys, food, cages, and miscellaneous items. Learn of the services we have to offer and decide for yourself if this is the store you'd like to call your home away from home. Victor Santucci, owner of Garden State Pet Center. Visit us today at 226 South Whitehorse Pike in Audubon, New Jersey. We're open seven days a week for all of your pets' needs. Back from the timeout here. One timeout left for Glassboro, two left for Clayton with a first and five after the illegal block and Air Jordan in the back. Oh my goodness, what a block at the defensive line by Clayton's number 52, Mr. Zane Carr. And that's going to set up a second down after the incompletion. I mean, I don't know how you physically get that high in the air with helmet with a helmet and pads on. I didn't know it was possible to get that high. I mean, that was a basketball center jump right there. Oh my goodness. Six forty one, clock is stopped here in the second quarter. Second and five from their own forty one. Here's a handoff. Barr has it. He's gonna roll to the left after cutting away from the right. It's gonna be enough for a Glassboro first down at the fifty. A darn near sold out crowd tonight here in Clayton. The atmosphere is electric. As we're about halfway through the second quarter with still no score, it's been a defensive masterclass tonight 
Nobody has been able to get ahead. I don't think a single team has gotten into the red zone tonight. Six oh four and counting in the half. Handoff up the middle to Barr. He's gonna get a good run and that might be enough for a first down all on its own. Yeah, they're gonna move it along. Back to back first downs by Devon Barr. And Glassboro is now chugging along. We'll see how far they can carry the momentum with the time that they have left. I mean, they've still got plenty of time, but if either of these teams go into the half with a score on the board, one will have more to talk about than the other. I think that's for sure. But if both of these teams go into the half 0-0, I think that's a true testament to how good the defense has been on both sides. I mean, you want to talk about the Saab guys. You want to talk about, you know, Chris Foster, all those guys out there for Glassboro's side on the offense because Foster's been slinging around the ball a lot, but he just hasn't been too successful with it. So now the real question is, if you're Clayton going into the locker room, you know, you know that Glassboro is a powerful team, but you also know that you're a powerful team. They just have more media attention than you do. So that's going to be something that they're going to have to look at you know, Clayton is a, is probably one of the more underrated teams in Group 1, in my opinion. But we're going to have another Group 1 powerhouse tomorrow with Gloucester and Woodbury. That's going to be a fun one. Again, 10.30 a.m. start time. Garden State Pet Center pregame show starts at 10.20. It's going to be a fun one. Here comes a handoff to the left, or rather towards the near sideline. Yeah, pass was complete to Xavier Saab. That's going to be another first down. First and 10 from the 26. Again, apologies to all of you, all our viewers, especially if this is your first broadcast. This isn't the best conditions that we've covered in, but we'd rather do this than set up on the top of the box and have to deal with the potential rain that's coming down later tonight. Here's a handoff up the middle. How far is he going to get with it? He's still up. And finally, the whistles are blown. And he's still in bounds. They're going to keep the clock running. Number 55, Brandon Simmons on the carry for the Bulldogs. That was a nine-yard carry by Simmons, second and one, the ball epic. Oh, that one's breaking free. Bar up the middle. Touchdown, Glassboro. It was about time that somebody broke through on the visiting side or on the hometown side. Oh, my. How about it? However, there is a Clayton. No, no, no. There is a Clayton player down on the field. In fact, there's two Clayton players down. So that one touchdown caused a lot of carnage. Hopefully both of those guys are okay. Can't see who, who they are just yet as they're being attended to by the Clayton medical staff. Yeah, you can see limping around a decent amount on the right side of your screen. I can't tell who that is. And then there's another player still down. 325 left in the half. Devon Barr just got through for that touchdown. So Nate Washburn being helped off with assistance. And I think the other may be number 52, Zion Carr. 
It's not Luca Mazzeo because he's up and fine on the sideline. And it's actually not Carr either because he's also up. But getting up rather slowly. Hopefully he can... Oh, boy. That's never a good sign. That is... Yeah, he's getting help actually from, from three people to get off the field. But you gotta imagine whatever that is. You pray it's nothing serious. You can see he's getting major assistance in getting off the field. Oh, even from an objective standpoint, that that really, really just hurts to see because it's not like one of those injuries where you stop the clock for a little bit, maybe it's a cramp or whatever. But that's not a cramp. That's the furthest thing from a cramp right there. He is actually being lifted off the field right now. That is number 75, Antonio Maldonado. I thought that was a two on his jersey, but we'll get away from that matter for now as he's gonna be attended to, and we'll bring it back to the two-point conversion here. Hand off, left side, sob in, and it's good. Two-point conversion works for Glassboro, and they lead 8-0 with 325 left in the half. Boy, it was a defensive game right until now. Glassboro got the advantage, got the momentum, and they ran with it. We'll be right back, 325, here in a second. Eight nothing Glassboro. Devon Barr and Amari Saab get in the end zone for a touchdown and a subsequent two point conversion. This broadcast is brought to you by Garden State Pet Center, the place to be for all things pet needs from the healthiest product choices available for your pet's food and also toys, cages, accessories, and more. Visit in person today on the on the 200 block of Whitehorse Pike in Audubon or on their website, visit online, exoticpetsnj.com. Should note their in-person location is open seven days a week. Here's the boot. And that one's going to be out, and it's going to be kicking out of bounds penalty from the 15. Well, that's going to be good for Clayton because if they're going to have one last kind of desperation drive before the half... They're going to need it, and they're going to need time to have it. I think they're going to re-kick it, actually. Yeah, so they're going to re-kick it from the 35, which, while a kind of trivial advantage for Clayton, it's still a five, it's still five yards either way. So, Well, we saw it twice, actually, with Pittman. We, we saw the controversy twice. They redid the kick twice. They had to kick it off three times which was quite a spectacle to see over at Davis Field, but. He says it won't happen again. Really? <laughs> we'll see what they have. Clayton moving up to the 45 on their return side. Here comes a nice kick. That's right to the center at the 25. Returned by, oh, wow, big hit there by number four on Clayton. Excuse me, that being number four, Jordan Barfield on the return. 
And that's going to be at the 43-yard line on Clayton's 43-yard line with 3.19 left in the half. So they still have time, but they need to move down the field quickly because they know that Glassboro can move down the field quickly. They've got electric runners in the backfield. They need to move quickly, whether it's by passing the ball or by running the ball. But we haven't seen much in terms of the passing game. Both of these guys seem like running teams, and that might partially be why this is such a low-scoring game here in the second quarter. Hand off up the middle. Taylor gets it across the 50, but it's not going to be good enough for a first down, at least from what I can see. They're going to, yeah, it's going to be about eight yards from the 49. First down markers at the 47, so it's going to be second and two. Eight yards carried by Taylor, second down and two for the Clippers. The ball at the Glassboro 49. Hand off to Taylor again. I'm going to push his way. Glassboro says no, but what do the referees say? We'll see where they spot it. It's going to be one yard gain at the 48, so they're inching ever so close, but they need to get that extra yard. It's going to be third and two, or excuse me, third and one. Big spot from the 48 as Clayton's going to line this one up. One of the few left-handed quarterbacks in South Jersey. We'll see what he hands it off to here. Because I don't think he's passing on third and one. He's not. Taylor's got it. Question is, is it a cross? It looks like it. And it's going to be a first down for the Clippers as they move it across in a desperation play. As they now have 2.03 left on the clock. Uh, now, the, now the clock's going to run. Yeah, I don't know why either. But now it's going to be... 155 and counting with first down and 10 from the 46 on the Glassboro side of the ball. Folks, don't forget to stay around for the DJK Roofing Halftime Show with Chris Baker and Brian Tortella on the sideline. Oh, that pass was blocked, but he still caught it. And that's going to be a tackle for a loss by Glassboro by a swarm of yellow and maroon. As the pass was completed to Sims, one of the first passes we've seen tonight. From the lefty QB. Timeout called by Glassboro. So Mikhail Robinson, Robinson will have a couple more tries to talk it over here. Pretty packed crowd on Glassboro's side and an even more packed crowd on Clayton's side. Marching bands in front of us here. We've got a great view of everything we've got down here at Hauptfield and with one minute and 14 seconds left in the half, you can see it right there. 8-0 in favor of the visitors. Vince, your thoughts so far? I mean, right now, uh, I know right now on the scoreboard says 8 0 uh, Glassboro, but in my solid opinion, I think this has been a very even, uh, even game. Um, like you said, it's been uh, mainly a rushing game in terms of, and the, the run defense on both sides for the most part has held its ground. But as in the run game is the hardest really for defense to stop, it's going to start tiring out both sides. And I think eventually you're going to start seeing the run game on both sides really start breaking through. And I know with this drive right here, you know, we're starting to see some type of breakthrough. So eventually the defenses are going to, they may start wearing down. Well, it's going to be second and long and... Seems like the run defense for Glassboro is only speeding up. That's another tackle for a loss, and it's going to be third and even longer than before. <laughs> With now one minute left in the half, Clayton is going to have to hurry it up here. Clayton has two timeouts. Glassboro just used their last one. 50 seconds now. It is truly a packed house tonight. I don't think I've seen a group one football game with this many people on a Friday night. You know, we see a lot of times maybe like 75% capacity, but I do not see a single open seat on the Clayton side. Well, now Clayton's going to call a timeout with 22 seconds left. 
I mean, they, they had too much time. They couldn't have let it go without a delay, a game call. But I don't know if I get the strategy there, you know? You want to you stop it? I don't know. I mean, I'm not a football coach. You know, I'm not the kind of guy that makes those decisions. But just in, in my opinion, I don't know why you'd wear down the time there and just try to I, – I think you need to try to – because I, I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to whittle the time down so that they have to make, like, those desperation plays – but if you just either rush the ball up the middle, use your two timeouts, because it's not like they roll over into the second half, you've got to use them. you got to use them or you lose them. So what's important here is that they move the ball quickly. And they would have been able to move the ball quickly, but not as quick as they have to. Now with 22 seconds compared to if they had 55 or even a minute and 10 like they had at the start. So... Clayton's going to go back out there, and they're going to have at least maybe one or two more tries. Still have one timeout left. Here we go. Handoff to Taylor. He's going to get it across the 50 right on top of the blue and yellow C, but that's not going to get too far. After Ian Gannon with the handoff. It's going to be five, four, three, two, one. They're really running it out. Wow. That ends the first half with an 8-0 Glassboro lead. And Clayton will go to the locker room to talk this one over. We'll be back in 10 minutes with our halftime report with Chris Baker and Brian Tortella. We'll be back in a few. Their marching band's going to have a quick performance, but we will be back for our halftime report. 8 nothing, Glassboro at the half. Garden State Pet Center. Tommy D's Home Design Center has opened a second location on Creek Road in Belmar. Operating in Philadelphia for over 25 years and now expanding into South Jersey, Tommy D's is the place to go for kitchen cabinets, countertops, and cabinet accessories, heavily discounted compared to big box retailers. Stop in, take a seat, and watch as our experienced kitchen designer makes the kitchen of your dreams right in front of you. Tommy D's is the best in the business for quality kitchen countertops and cabinets that fit all budgets. Call us today at 856-210-9504 or visit the new location in person on the corner of Creek Road and Harding Avenue in Belmar next to the 42 on-ramp. DJK Roofing is an American-known company that cares about our customers. We answer the phone 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and offer financing options to keep cash in your pocket. Even in our busiest times, estimates happen within 24 hours if needed. Most jobs can be completed in one day. Our measurement techniques ensure accuracy, so there are no extra waste materials when we replace your roof. We treat our home like it's yours. From the biggest to the smallest jobs, the owner will be on site to oversee the operation. Our employees are not permitted to smoke on jobs, and cleanup is so good that it might be cleaner than we are. For all your roofing needs, call DJK Roofing now. Garden State Pet Center is an independently owned, full-service pet store. Our specialty is promoting companionship between people and animals by providing the healthiest product choices available, including all-natural foods, supplements that support and relieve health issues, and innovative products for pet parents. Our goal is to provide our customers with a relaxing environment, and while we're not striving to be the biggest store on the East Coast, we're striving to be the best. No other pet store will make you feel at home like we do. At Garden State Pet Center, we view pets as members of the family. We don't believe in fast, high-pressure sales, but instead matching up the right pet with the right owners as you are making a lifelong commitment. Together with our team members, we would like your visit to our store to be both enjoyable and educational. Simply drop in and take a look around. View the birds, reptiles, small animals, toys, food, cages, and miscellaneous items. Learn of the services we have to offer and decide for yourself if this is the store you'd like to call your home away from home.
Victor Santucci, owner of Garden State Pet Center. Visit us today at 226 South Whitehorse Pike in Audubon, New Jersey. We're open seven days a week for all of your pets' needs.
We're here at the halftime. Brian Tortella is on the sideline. Brian, you've seen a good game so far, 8 nothing. It's a little bit wet out there. I've seen the rain coming down. How have you felt out there today? Well, I, I was going to say, I was not very surprised that this has been a defensive first half as we've seen in the games that Glassboro and Clayton have played in previous years, but I did not think it was going to be scoreless until three minutes left in the quarter. What do you think's next for both of these sides? Yeah, and I agree with you, Brian. Thank you very much for your time. Stay dry out there and uh, tell Chris to keep charging his phone. Of course, I will. Thank you. All right, we'll see you, Brian. That is Brian Tortella of Paulsboro with our halftime report as he's hanging out on the Glassboro sideline right there. And Vince, since you're two feet away from me and not, you know, 300 feet away, what's your assessment of this first half? Well, I mean, this first half right now, I mean, at the beginning, right, we saw that the, both defenses have been really strong on the run defense, and, you know, there's really been, there was really no momentum, period. And, and, and then all of a sudden, Glassboro uh, put together a, a beautiful drive, was able to score, and then were able to put on two points afterwards. So, you know, that was a that was a big-time drive, right? You were able to shift moment, momentum in your area. Now, the only thing is, you know, you have the ha you have halftime, right? Things have settled down. So now, you know, uh, right now Clayton has to really find themselves as, you know, like I said, everything's settled. Halftime was a good amount of time to really settle everything. They had uh, time to talk in the locker rooms and really get a good idea of what their attack is going to be in the second half. And hopefully, for Clayton's sake, they can put something together. And right now, Glassboro really needs to make sure that they stay strong with offense and they stay strong with defense and really... Their job basically is to keep their momentum from the first half. And I agree with the events there. You know, Glassboro and Clayton, they were at a 0-0 tie. There were two goose eggs on the board for most of the first half. It, ha it hasn't been an offensive game, as you said. The run defense really is the only defense that there is. Neither team is willing to pass that much. Christopher Foster, when he passes the ball, he does it with authority. And he does it... You know, he basically goes all or nothing. He, he doesn't go with these, you know, light screen passes. If he's going to pass the ball, he's looking to go halfway down the field. So that's going to be what we're going to look for in the next 24 minutes of play. Glassboro leads 8 nothing over the Clayton Clippers here in the halftime break. Now going into the third quarter of this West Jersey Football League contest. Don't forget, we're at Woodbury with Gloucester as the visitor for tomorrow, 10.30 a.m. Get up bright and early, get your eggs and cheese, get your pork roll, get everything you need to get yourself awake on a Saturday morning because it's going to be a good game for us to cover in Woodbury. Big thanks to Anthony Reagan and Dan Howie for having us out there. And we've got some college softball this weekend, with that being at 4 o'clock on the 30th with the Salem Community College Mighty Oaks facing off against the SUNY Purchase Panthers at 4 p.m. on Saturday the 30th. And then on October the 1st, we're going to be at the Del Castle Sports Complex in Wilmington, Delaware for two games. It's Salem Community College versus Chesapeake College at 10 and Wilmington University at 12. So Mikel Robinson will send this one away for Clayton. They got the first half kickoff. Now they'll have to defer here in the second half. Sending it from the 40. 
Ready to go, that one is high in the air as we're underway in the second half. Sends a bounce in at the 15. Glassboro, Saab gets taken down inside the 20. That's a good start right there. That is an excellent start right there by the Clayton defense. They got it off to a hot start and that's exactly what they needed, especially if they're gonna break that momentum that Glassboro had to close out the first half. Now they're gonna capitalize on that and Clayton will set up a good defensive field position and a poor offensive field position for Glassboro to start the second half. I'm Dan Wilkins here with Vincent Folk up in the booth here at Haupt Field and Clayton. Chris Baker and Brian Tortella are sideline reporters. Fake by Foster. And that's a sack by a swarm of Clayton blue and gold. It's going to be second down Number and long. Zion Carr. So Zion Carr. Tackling the quarterback Foster for a loss on the play. That was a five-yard loss on the play. It's now second and 15 for Bulldogs. They have the ball at their own 15. At their own 15, a not ideal circumstance for Glassboro, but we'll see what they can work with here. In the I form, handoff up the middle to Barr. He's going to break free. At the 40, he gets taken down and splattered on the back. That's going to be an easy first down, and that takes away that takes away a sense of danger for Glassboro as they, you know, were maybe in a little bit of danger, dangerous uh, territory there with Clayton being inside their 15. But now with that big run by Barr, that takes away a lot of that pressure. It's going to be first and 10 from their own 40. Here comes a throw by Foster. He gets it way up in the air. Almost picked and he couldn't get it. Oh no. Oh. Demetrius Williams almost had it. I don't know if that throw was tipped, but that was one of the highest arcs I've ever seen on a throw. It's like it went straight up. I don't know if it slipped out of his hand wrong. Remember, it is slightly, it is misting like it was last night in Audubon. So it could be making that ball slippery. Same with the turf out there. And Barr with another run. That's going to be another first down for Glassboro. As the fans still filing into their seats here early in the third. 10-11 on the clock here in quarter number three. From the opposing 49, here's a handoff up the middle. Here's another run by Barr. Glassboro's out of funny business now. They're getting into the serious business right now. A third straight third down, uh, excuse me, third straight first down off the rush by Devon Barr. He has been unstoppable in this third quarter. Not only did, they, did he score that touchdown late in the second, now he's been basically all of Glassboro's defense in one conglomerate here in the third and they still have plenty of time left but still plenty of time for Clayton to stage a comeback if they go down by two scores. Handoff gets a good run this time not as much though as a swarm of Clayton defenders get him down there. 
Couple of South Jersey scores. Cherokee shut out Williamstown 34-0. Eastern, uh, Eastern and Kingsway are tied 21-21 going into overtime. Millville leads Lenape 13-3. Washington Township leads Vineland 28-7. Hamilton leads Rancocas Valley 7-8, excuse me, 7-6 at the half. Holy Spirit leads Clearview 24-0 in the fourth. Northern Burlington leads Triton 17-7 in the third. Deptford leads Collingswood 14 to uh, excuse me 27-14 in the fourth. PVI leads Morristown 17-0 at the half. As that's going to be another stop by Clayton right there. Glassboro seemed to have unbound momentum. They had everything going for them, and now it seems to have stagnated a little bit here with third down now at third and about seven ish at the 33 it looks like and hillsboro leads union eight nothing in the first Foster goes back to pass. He's going to let it fly. Flags are down. It is incomplete. But let's see what the flags are all about. Holding on the offense. So even if that pass was completed as Foster went for desperation, wouldn't have worked out anyway. So that's going to knock him back but I believe they're gonna retry third down here. So maybe they'll get another opportunity. We've seen crazier things happen before. It's gonna bring him back to the 42. Third and long, Glassboro looking to convert after the holding penalty. They're going to hand it off up the middle, not going to get far at all, and Clayton's going to smother it. The run by Glassboro's number two, Zaire Tate on the run, not really getting anywhere with it. And it's going to be fourth down from the 42. No yards on that carry, and it's now fourth and 16 Bulldogs. Well, Christopher Foster is going back out there. This might be a good opportunity for Gloucester here. We've seen a couple of opportunities for Foster to air it out. I don't know if he's going to try to do it again or what, but we'll see. And hold on, hold on, whistles. Timeout called by Glassboro. We'll take a quick break. 6.42 left in the third. Glassboro is going to have fourth and long when we come back. DJK Roofing is an American-known company that cares about our customers. We answer the phone 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and offer financing options to keep cash in your pocket. Even in our busiest times, estimates happen within 24 hours if needed. Most jobs can be completed in one day. Our measurement techniques ensure accuracy, so there are no extra waste materials when we replace your roof. We treat our home like it's yours. From the biggest to the smallest jobs, the owner will be on site to oversee the operation. Our employees are not permitted to smoke on jobs, and cleanup is so good that it might be cleaner than we are. For all your roofing needs, call DJK Roofing now. Back from the timeout, 642 left in the third. 
Glassboro's gonna go for desperation here. On fourth and 16, Foster from the pocket lets it fly. It is in trouble and dropped. That's gonna be a turnover. Knocked away by Clayton's Sims. And it'll be a turnover on downs to keep the Bulldogs in check. Man, it seems like Foster just had no luck with the passing game, but as we were saying over to break, Vince, you think he might have been over under throwing his guys a little bit there? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, there's been uh, the two passes previously, uh, the one at the 30-yard line over here, it was under thrown, and then another one down by the 10. So, I mean, his receivers are usually way out in front of the ball, and therefore every time he's making these long ball throws, it has a possibility of being picked a lot of, uh, pretty much every time. Well, now it's time for Clayton to capitalize on that. We'll see if they can get it home. Hand off to Sims. He gets blocked by his own man. He breaks through. He's at the 45, gets leveled on his back. No flags, and it's going to be a first down for the Clippers. Saab with the tackle, but... Sims was almost a ragdoll out there. I mean, my word. I thought he would have too. Yeah, I'm surprised how he, hang, how, how he hung on to it. Yeah, that was a great job by hanging on to the ball. Key situation, and hey, look, they're at the 50-yard line. So, or excuse me, 45-yard line, I think that's what the ball's called. The fumble there turns over all of your momentum. Oh, yeah, the, it goes It, right it sucks back, it all out of right you. Right back to last throw. So, good job. Very strong right there. He'll be in the shotgun here. With Ian Gannon, Gannon with the handoff to Isaac Taylor. Not going to get too far with that one. Going to be second down. I mean, this place is a sellout crowd. I mean, you're you're looking right now. Let's take a look at the far sideline. All those people over there. Not just that, but all the way over on this side as well. That is, this is one of the, for a group one school, basically in the middle of nowhere in Gloucester County, this is one of the biggest high school crowds that I've ever seen for a small school. That was a big tackle there by Glassboro, by Dominic Barr. That, yeah. I mean, we got here at 6.20, 40 minutes before the game, and we had to park a block away to find a parking spot. I mean, really, it was, this is one of the most, uh, you know, home valued and local crowds that I've ever seen for a small school high school football game. Even when we opened up the season with Cherry Hill East and Triton, yes, they were playing at an alternate site because Triton was undergoing construction, but that was a decent crowd, but it wasn't a sellout. There were still rows and rows of empty bleachers. I don't see a single empty bleacher seat here. Oh, he tripped over himself. Ball is loose. But there's the whistle. So Taylor didn't get anywhere with that one, and he also lost the ball, but the whistle was blown. What's going on here? I think Barr had to have a, a strap readjusted. They're going to bring out the special teams unit, and that's really a shame because Clayton, Clayton had such a good run going after that turnover on downs. They stopped the Glassboro momentum. It looked like they were destined for a touchdown, and then they forced that turnover on downs by Foster. Now... It's looking a little bit more questionable. We'll see what they can do here. With Robinson to punt it away. Saab to return. That's high. That is way high. Hold on now. Wait a second. That's going to... Uh, yeah, there's a flag on that one. There was a, a very rough tackle there inside the 20. I think that one was clear as day. We got it on our cameras right there. That's going to be on Clayton, I think. Unless Glassboro instigated it. We'll see what the refs say here. 3.33 left in the third quarter. Here in week five, Friday Night Lights. We're having a good one, folks. I don't know what they're trying. I don't. I don't know what the deal is here. We're gonna zoom out a little bit, because it's gonna be a personal foul against Glassboro, from what I'm hearing. Now, 
Yeah, hold on here. Personal foul, blindside block on Glassboro. So they get the punt, but they're gonna darn they're gonna be darn near in their own end zone. This is gonna make it really interesting here for the visitors for the Bulldogs as the Clippers are gonna try to trap them there. Could make it eight <laughs> two. Wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Let's see what they can do. From their own I don't even know where they're at. They're at their own eight yard line. First and 10. They're in a real tight situation here. A bad snap or a tackle for loss, a couple of them could get you in the end zone. Hand off, oh, leveled, and he's gonna get down. What a tackle there. That was number eight, Yasir Saud Dumas. I don't know where they're going to spot this one. 310 on the clock. I was going to say, referee's talking to John Chamberlain. They're still in the huddle, so maybe a bit of confusion. I don't know what it was, but they stopped the clock at 310, so... They're going to line it up. Oh, holding against Glassboro. So what? Are, so they don't even have 10 yards to go. I don't know what you're going to do there. Where are they, where are they going to put it? They were at the 10 if it was holding against Glassboro. I don't know what you do there. Yeah, I imagine so. Here comes a handoff to Saab, to Amari Saab, that is. That doesn't go too far. Oh, penalty was declined on the play. That would explain it, yeah. I mean, they, they, they couldn't have gone any, any further back. So it's going to be third and eight from the 14. Will they be able to convert? He will, he will not. A late tackle there. And a late throwdown by Glassboro's number 52. That being Jerome Foster. It's going to be well short. Actually, not that short. <laughs> from where from where I was looking, it looked like it was a lot shorter than it actually is. They're going to line it up 14th, uh, excuse me, 4th and 2. 2.06 left in the 3rd. This is where things get pretty feisty, folks. 8 nothing Glassboro. 4th and 2. They might just try to push it across with sheer force. But it looks like, no, they are going to punt it away. Punter lined up at his own 5. Oh, he almost got rushed on that one. It's up, it's in the air. It's gonna just blot straight down at the 40 and it's picked up at the 43. Clayton will take over. And as we said, Glassboro had the momentum. Clayton has stomped that. Now they have to convert the energy that their defense has had and transfer it to the offense. Because Ian Gannon hasn't had much of the spotlight tonight. Isaac Taylor, um, you know, a lot of their guys on the, on the rushing side of the ball, uh, Mikhail Robinson, as well as uh, Nate Wiseburn, uh, Jordan Barfield, Demetrius Williams. Their rushing game has had the spotlight. It's time for Ian Gannon to get out of the shadows. You know, nothing against him here, but if you want to help your team win, I don't think handing the ball off 100 times is going to do you any good. I think they need to pass the ball, even if it's a couple screens, because even an average pass does more than a great run. So I think that they absolutely just need to start passing the ball, throw Glassboro off. They've been running it all night. And that is a great example of why I think they should start passing the ball there because that is a tackle for loss involving Demetrius Williams and a tackle by Glassboro's number five, Brandon Simmons. Second and 15. That's not your average loss. A five-yard loss is not an insignificant one, and that's going to be a timeout called 
by Clayton. Oh, never mind. No, 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 no. Never mind. Never mind. It's an official's timeout. There's an injured. It's uh, I think it's Demetrius Williams. You can see something in his left leg. Being attended to by the Clayton Athletic staff. Or excuse me, yeah, that that is uh, Williams down there. Clayton celebrated their homecoming during the home uh, the homecoming Queen King and the rest of the British royal family. They celebrated that during the halftime. It's actually a pretty interesting ceremony. I mean, I was I was in line for the uh, amenities, but I will say. Um, you know, to any Clayton fans out there, uh, their brand new field, Haupt Field, this is one of the greatest facilities that I've ever visited in South Jersey. I got to take a walk around the stadium. Um, you know, this is one of the best local fields that I've seen um, and one of the best local fields as well, considering that this isn't right next to a big city. You know, you have to take a, a lot of back roads through a lot of cornfields after yeah. getting off of 55 exit 48. You know, <laughs> you've got to go a long way to get here. So... You know, we took about a 35-minute drive, and uh, it was it, it's great to be out here in Clayton. And uh, to our Clipper fans, again, don't forget, we'll be out here for the Thanksgiving game versus the Pittman Panthers on November 23rd. So we hope to see you there to celebrate Thanksgiving with us and with the Pittman Panthers and Clayton Clippers. 11.30, I believe, is the start time for that Thanksgiving game. Yeah, you can see Williams down there on the sideline getting attended to. He may have sprained something, hyperextended something. Don't want to fuel too many rumors, but now, what's the issue now? Now Clayton calls a timeout, so 59.6 on the clock in the third quarter. We'll take a quick break. Beautiful stop by Vincent Folk on the clock right there. Beautiful, right on the money. We'll be right back. Well, I think it's been a good five minutes since our last play, but it's second and 15. From the Glassboro 48, eight nothing Bulldogs late in the third. Hand off to Taylor. Not gonna get too far of that, but gets it past the C. Whistle's blown, maybe gets a yard out of it. This broadcast is brought to you by DJK Roofing, South Jersey's number one roofing supplier with over 205 star reviews on the web. Get a free quote today, 856-778-3900. Financing options are available, just ask for Carmine. Pitch back to Taylor. It's a good play, but... Oh, we got a wait. We got a late flag coming in, and I think it's going to be on Glassboro, considering the reaction of the home booth. And there's going to be another late flag. Glassboro getting in the face of a Clayton player, and that's going to be a litany of penalties. Maurice Davis, or excuse me, uh, that would be Dominic Barr who got in the face of Clayton's number four, Jordan Barfield. Well, there were two separate flags. There was one for a late hit out of bounds, and there was another one for the Glassboro player getting in his face. It's going to be a personal foul on Glassboro. 
and a second personal foul on sportsmanlike conduct. So we've got a double whammy against Glassboro. I mean, you don't get any, you don't get any worse than that. And I think they might have been committed against the same player. <laughs> the out of bounds hit and the unsportsmanlike conduct because he was, you know, kind of boasting in his face a little bit and. You know, maybe you get away with that in the NFL, but you don't get away with that in high school. Now, where are they going to line this up? The referee might have to walk a 5K here. We'll see how they line it. Past the 30. They're going to keep going. To the 25. To the 20. <laughs> to the 15. <laughs> Referee's still going, and he gets down. <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> That's going to be at the 14. Vince, you don't get any better than this. No, you don't. Not at all. I mean, I've, they just I had the lucky. They just had the luckiest break, considering that Glassboro kind of dug themselves that hole. Now, what are they going to get? Hand off to Taylor. He's got a good run. They're trying to push. They're trying to push. And the clock is stopped with 5.5. Excuse me, they are going to run it out to end the third quarter. We're going to line it up on the other side of the 100-yarder, and we're going to see where Clayton can take this one from here. Folks, the game is on the line, and we've got 12 more minutes to play. 8 nothing after 3. The end of the third, now into the fourth. Got 12 minutes to play. I was gonna say, somebody's gotta shut off the music. <laughs> there we go. 12 minutes to play, Clayton in their best offensive position yet. Ian Gannon in the shotgun. They're gonna hand it off. He's pulling him from the legs, and now whistle is blown. No flags. As the first play of the fourth, with Demetrius Williams, who was down a couple minutes ago in the third, he's back in the ball game, and they're going to set it up third and mid range, about five yards to the goal. Probably, at, probably, I'd say. Actually, third and four, maybe from the eight, either the seven or eight yard line. Intensity running high here at Clayton, student section to our right on their feet. Gannon hands off to Taylor. He's going to push. But that's going to be, I think, short because the first down marker is in between the four and five. Ian Gannon is out. And are they going to try a field goal? I don't know what they're going to try to do here. Gannon is off. So is Williams. But I think they're just going over strategy here. It's going to be fourth and one from the five-yard line. Oh, my goodness. 
Yeah. Well, they may. Who knows? We'll see what uh, this offensive line puts together. Cook yeah. What, what what do they call it for the Eagles? The uh... it's the, well. They, there's a lot of names that are coming out uh, about what the Eagles do. There's there's the tush push. There's yeah. The, there you the, go. It's that's mainly, what I was thinking yeah, of. Yeah. It's mainly the sneak, but I mean, hey, it's fourth and one. I mean, hey, a lot of high school offices uh, offenses get a lot of inspiration from the NFL. Yeah. We'll see what. But happens it's fourth and one from the five. Hand off, Taylor gets through! What do they call? Hold on, it is gonna be, I think, short. Short. No, it, no, yeah, it's no. gonna be short. It's gonna be a first and goal, and they're gonna get at the front door. They're standing on the doormat of a touchdown. They're at the one yard line. They're as close as you can get. Taylor breaks through. Glassboro wants it to be short. Did they really? Did they really stop it at the one? Oh my they goodness! Stopped him. Oh no wow! No single of a touchdown. No touchdown. Clayton gets stopped. It's going to be second and goal. At least if you're getting a first down from the one, you have several other opportunities. Wow. So it's not. It's not all for a for no cause. They're still going to try it again, and I think they're still going to get in the end zone, but. Don't take my word for it. We will have to see whether that can come to fruition. For a game-tying drive. Where is it going to be? No way. Touch. Wait. No. Hold on. No. No signal yet. Yeah, the backfield judge called it a touchdown, but nobody else did. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, it was short. They stopped it again. Well, we've been talking about defense all night. Glassboro's got a great wall of China out there. They've, they've got a brick wall with steel reinforcement. I mean, oh, my goodness. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, right now, all they have to do is really fall forward. The fact that they are stopping them straight at the one-yard line is really showing That's a testament to the strength. But, hey, defense. there's still one more. We're there's still, still one. at least two more oh, chances. Two more. Excuse me. Taylor tries to fall forward. <laughs> is this one a touchdown? No way. Oh, this one is. Touchdown, Clayton. Touchdown, Clayton. It took him several tries, but this place is in a frenzy. It's 8-6 in the fourth. The Clippers are back in the game. It's a two-point game. Isaac Taylor, the star of the show. Adds another to his resume. And it looks like they're going to, I mean, it's a no-brainer to go yeah. for two. Well, I mean, especially now you're in the fourth quarter. You have to, time, you, you have, have to. to go for it. Exactly. No ifs, ands, or buts. You have to go for it. Unless you want to lose the game, yeah. then you have to go for it. I mean, let's say real, ladies and gentlemen, it's been tough for both teams moving the ball back and forth. You have the opportunity now. I mean, there's no guarantee you're going to get the ball down to the end zone again. There's so, no guarantee that you're going to get the ball back with exactly. how long Glassboro's had possession. So they really need to think about this. And, I mean, this is this could possibly be the game. I hate that I'm saying that, but it could possibly be it. Yeah. If Glassboro, I mean, Glassboro stopped Clayton twice on the one-yard line. By the way, timeout called by Glassboro. I forgot the AD's name is Dan Antonelli. I thought he was calling me. <laughs> no, but... I mean, really, with how defensive masterclasses have worked, there's 819 left. You can't guarantee that not only are you going to get the ball back, but you're going to have the time to drive it down the field and get back in the end zone. So, But as we said, Glassboro's done crazy things before. They've stopped Clayton on the one. They did it They did it not once, they did it yeah. twice. I didn't, I didn't think they could do it twice, yeah. but they did. I mean, gosh darn it, they did. <laughs> I don't know how. You just have to fall forward, and they stop that. So are they going to be able to get a two-point conversion? I don't know. They had to get through thick and thin by the skin of their teeth to get in the end zone. It's going to be an uphill battle for them to get the two-point conversion. You know, I, and this is something what I think here, and this is something that you said uh, earlier in the game. This, and I, I really think that this is a time where the pass game really needs to come and show up. It's just not there right now. And, I know, and that's the problem. It's not right there, but you really need that change to surprise this defense. They have your number when it comes to the run game. They, uh, in my opinion, 
you really need to try to pass game here. You, I mean, sometimes, this is how the game goes sometimes. You have to walk out on the limb sometimes, and I think this is the time. They have to do it. The time is now, 8-6. 8-19 left in the fourth, and a timeout is called by Glassboro. Or excuse me, Clayton called the timeout. So Glassboro called one, Clayton called one. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to hold our breath. Well, maybe not for that long. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want your face turning purple, Vince, but we'll be right back. It's 8 6. Eight six, fourth quarter. Eight nineteen, left in the ball game. Glassboro stopped Clayton before. Can they do it again? Gannon rolling out to the right. He's got room. Is he in? He gets leveled, and it's in. Unbelievable! Two point conversion is good. It's eight eight. The Clippers have stormed back and tied the game! What a turn of events here at Hopped! One touchdown on both sides and a two point conversion good on both sides. We saw one in the second quarter and we see one in the fourth quarter. Clayton has tied the game. The Navy and Gold are back in it. The Clippers have tied it. Unbelievable. You don't get much more intense than that. I, I did not. I mean, I'll just say it right now. Before this play went off, I thought Clayton was going to get stopped. With how good Glassboro's defense had been, with how much they had to slice through. You know, it's like sticking a knife into a wall of concrete. That's hard to do. But, I mean, oh my goodness. Oh, there's few moments as a sports broadcaster that leave you breathless yeah. and moments like that. We might not be done. We might have another one, but how am I going to have a voice for Woodbury and Gloucester tomorrow or for Salem Community College softball at 4 p.m. from the Jackson Complex? I've still got four games this week and I need to save my I need to save my resources. Here's a kick by Clayton picked up by number seven. Or excuse me, by Saab. He's going to run down the sideline. He's got a good run out at the 45, in between the 45 and 50. He gets taken down there by a swarm of Clayton Navy and Gold, and that's going to be a first down for the, uh, for the Bulldogs. As we were talking about, we've got the Gloucester Lions and the Woodbury Thundering Herd in a Another West Jersey tilt. Our next football broadcast after that will be October 6th. We'll be going up north, St. Joe's, Metuchen, and Edison. 7 o'clock start time at, uh, on October 6th. And then we've got another Group 1 powerhouse going off on October 7th, Paulsboro and Salem, 12 o'clock start time. We'll see how it rolls. You know, we had some real humdingers of games earlier this year. We had... You know, the 54 to 14s, we had the blowouts. We've had a great streak of games in the last couple of weeks. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Saab up the middle, rolling out to the left. He gets swallowed up at the 46, rather by the 47 by Raymond Sims. 
broadcast is brought to you by Doug Does Anything, your local handyman. For any job needed, no matter how big or small, give Doug Does Anything a call, 856-412-0118, or find him on Facebook at Doug Does Anything. Don't forget, folks, for our Clipper fans, we will be back for the Thanksgiving game, the 98th edition of the Pittman-Clayton uh, Thanksgiving Tilt. It'll be no November 23rd, 11 a.m. to close out our football season. Saab gets a run up the middle, and he's going to be stopped across the 50, well across the 50, into the 44, and that's going to be a first down for Glassboro. Well, after having a defense-heavy game all game, now it seems like... <laughs> Now it seems like it's ramped up a little bit. I, I did not expect the offense to be a, a prominent figure at all. I thought this was going to be a defense game, which we were right about, but yeah. In the I form, Foster dumps a pass off to Xavier Saab, gets tripped up at his own feet, and he gets knocked out of the pylon, gets a late flag, and that's going to be on Clayton. That's not going to help anybody right there. Saab got twirled around. Yeah, I think we know where that one's going to. Yeah, that's going to be on Clayton. Personal foul. I mean, that just makes it easier for, for Glassboro, but if you think about it from this way, if Glassboro gets back up and Clayton has that opportunity, say with five minutes left, let's say it takes him a, a minute 40 to score, if they score at all, takes him a minute 40, let's say five minutes left, that's still plenty of time. The question is for Glassboro though, if you score, do you go for two, make it 16 to eight, do you play it safe, make it 15 to eight? But sometimes in high school, going for a two pointer is safer than going for one with how few prominent high school kickers there are. Saab gets yanked by the jersey. Where will the forward momentum take him but a big tackle by number 52, Zion Carr. Takes it down and that's gonna be second and long after the very unfortunate penalty, but it was the right call. We've seen a lot of high emotions, you know, a lot of personal fouls, more than what we usually see in high school football. Remember, a lot of the players are inspired by the pros. It's yeah. exactly what happens. You see more personal fouls in the NFL these days, you see more personal fouls in high school and college too. Just trickles down the ladder. Oh, hold on, that's gonna be a flag. And they'll have a delay of game. I thought it was gonna be a false start, but it was a delay of game. Same result, but yeah. We just don't get to do the Macarena like we usually do for the false start. Well, the student section is cheering, you can't do that. Well, what about the personal foul about a minute ago? Can you do that? <laughs> I don't think you can do that either. <laughs> make it make sense, guys. 540 left in regulation. It's an 8-8 game. You don't see many games like this in South Jersey. Matt Cosentino is here. Chris Baker, Brian Tortella, our good friends are here. That's going to be a timeout on Glassboro. 540 left in the half. We're going to take a quick break. All knotted up at 8 between the maroon and gold and the navy and gold. We'll be right back. DJK Roofing is an American. Tommy D's Home Design Center has opened a second location on Creek Road in Belmar. Operating in Philadelphia for over 25 years and now expanding into South Jersey, Tommy D's is the place to go for kitchen cabinets, countertops, and cabinet accessories, heavily discounted compared to big box retailers. 
Stop in, take a seat, and watch as our experienced kitchen designer makes the kitchen of your dreams right in front of you. Tommy D's is the best in the business for quality kitchen countertops and cabinets that fit all budgets. Call us today at 856-210-9504 or visit the new location in person on the corner of Creek Road and Harding Avenue in Belmar next to the 42 on-ramp. Second and 17 after the delay of game. Foster dumps it off to the left side, picked up. He's open. He's got room inside the red zone, and that's going to be out of play. Let's see where they line that one up. That's going to be, well, on a second and 17, I think that might be a first. Yeah, it yeah. will be. Hold on, folks. Trying to fix the focus. Trying to fix the focus here. Hold on. Hold on. We uh, we just ran into an issue here. Hold on. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> it's still blurry. We gotta fix that. There we go. Okay. We do the Rutgers Camden trick. We zoom in and yeah, yeah. itself. <laughs> Although speaking of Rutgers Camden, stay tuned as we should be getting approval soon to cover their fall scrimmage with Rutgers Camden baseball and Holy Family University on October 7th, along with a second night game versus RCSJ Cumberland and the Dukes from the Camden Athletic Complex again October 7th. We've got a couple busy weekends ahead of us. Although Chris Baker will be on the analysis call for the Salem Community College softball game since he's a student there. He's doing their games on Saturday and Sunday with us here on DWB. Foster hands off to the right. He stays up, Boar stays up, gets leveled. going to be short of a first it looks like. It's going to be third and one from the 16. But this worries me a little bit for Clayton because Glassboro has been taking their time and that's exactly what they want. When they score, because they're confident that they're going to score, they want to have the least amount of time on the clock possible. And hold on now. Yeah, it's going to be a timeout on Glassboro. Glassboro. They've got one left, but right now Glassboro has the ball in their court. They control their own destiny, and they know that Clayton, just like them, they move the ball slower. Glassboro is known for moving the ball a little faster, and, you know, Clayton is a lot slower on offense just in terms of their progress. You know, maybe it takes them third down a lot of times to get that first to move the chains, but... Glassboro's getting first down, first down, first down. They've been doing it like clockwork. So if they can just manage their time and leave as little on the clock left for Clayton to work with, that could be how they win the game. And off to the left. Saab crosses him up. He gets spun around. He's still on his feet. Gets down inside the five. I was going to say, I don't think Saab wanted to score there because they still want to have, I don't know why the clock stopped. It clock shouldn't be, I guess, because they're a first down. First and goal from the five. Eight, eight, four, oh, nine, left in the fourth. Now the clock will run. Once again, the winning ticket for 
you collected $250. That's 703101. I usually stay silent for the 50 50s in case somebody left the game and, oh, I didn't win the 50 50. But you did from your car. Well, here we go from the left hash, from inside the five. Glassboro looking to break the stalemate. Here goes Saab. Up the middle. Touchdown, Glassboro. Number three, Amari Saab in for a touchdown for the Bulldogs from five yards out. They've got 3.30 left on the clock. Actually, 3.36. I don't know. The clock shouldn't be running. But now it's 14-8. And Glassboro just made Clayton's opportunities a lot thinner. The winning 50-50 ticket number once again is 703101. 703-101. I don't think it should be at 324. It should be like 338, something like that, because we have 336 on our clock. Yeah, I don't know about that. Wait a second. Number three, Amari Saab. Yeah, it, it is good. It looked like the ball was kind of rattling around a little bit, but it's, it is good. 16 to 8. Glassboro, two for two on their two pointers. Now Clayton has a uphill battle here. 324 on the clock here in the fourth. Vince, where do you think it goes from here? I mean, right now, obviously the clock is your number one, you know, <laughs> is your number one enemy at times. Now, what you got to really do is, yes, it is 324. So you, it's not like you have, you know, a minute or a minute 30. You have you time, but you have less time than you'd like. Exactly. So you, you kind of, you don't want to really pressure yourself. You want to try to, you know, make as, as much of, you know, you don't want to be back too far. Now, obviously, if, you know, they kick it off right, you don't want to be back too far. You want to get a good return, and you, you want to be, you want to set yourself up in a good position. You really do not want to be behind the 20-yard line, you know, if possible. That would be in a very bad territory. So what you're looking at right now is just by maneuvering the ball well, trying to, to not get any flags, right? Try not to back yourself up. Try to keep things going in your favor and just really keep get momentum back to you. You don't want to do anything that can hurt you momentum wise. So that's really what they got to they got to do uh, going here to try to tie it up before the end of the game. Yeah, we'll see what they can do. I mean, we missed out on Overbrook Collingswood going to overtime last week or 2 weeks ago rather. Here's the kick. Taken in by Robinson or rather by Oh, 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 oh here we go. At the 50, he is out at the 45. How about it for you, number four, that being Jordan Barfield. Oh, man. Well, you were talking about time being your enemy. They just made the time. Man, they just made the time perfectly right there. As Clayton takes over some out-of-town scores, Cherokee shutout Williamstown 34-0. Washington Township beat the Vineland Fighting Clan 28-7. Kingsway beat Eastern 28-21 in overtime. Winslow crushed Ocean City, the Red Raiders, 40-6. Pensalkin and Del Rand, a game that we were going to do originally, that ended 35-14 in favor of the Pensalkin Indians. Holy Spirit and Clearview 24-0. Northern Burlington beat Triton 24-7. Deptford beat Collingswood on their senior night, 27-14. Pennsville beat Cumberland, 25-12. We'll get back to that in a second after Isaac Taylor gets a loss, gets it inside. They originally had it on the 49. Now it's going to be on rather the 47. Millville beat Lenape, 26-3. St. Augustine beat Shawnee in a close one, 24-21. Hammonton, Ham, yeah, excuse me, Hamilton beat Rancocas Valley, 21-6. Oakcrest beat Absegemi, 22-13. And Riverside crushed Eustis, 46-8. Which Eustis just got a brand new turf field. They might just still be getting used to it. So, and don't forget, folks, tomorrow we've got Woodbury and Gloucester to wrap up Week Five here on DWB. Second and about nine. Oh, oh he's in oh, trouble. No. Gannon goes down. Big hit by number 12. For Glassboro, that being Mr. Keron Wright. 
And that does not bear good news as it's going to be third and about a country mile for Clayton. They were doing so well. They had the they had the immaculate kick return. They had everything going in their favor. But if Glassboro makes the stop, they put this game on ice. Yeah. What I was getting at, Vince. <laughs> oh, yeah. You don't get my bad puns yet. You haven't worked with me long enough. Here at Haupt Field in Clayton, a desperation opportunity. Third and 19. Uh -oh. He's in trouble. Gannon slides. He gets trapped up. And Glassboro's going to take him down. And again, they've got one last shot. Clayton has no timeouts. And Gannon is down, which is even more bad news for Clayton. Well, one of the things that I'll say, you know, like I said before, during the halftime break, uh, this Haupt Field uh, facility, brand new, uh, put in last year. They did the graduation on the turf. That was like their first big event that they had. Uh, but big thanks to John Chamberlain and Dan Antonelli for having us out here. We'll be back for the Thanksgiving game versus Pittman. This is truly one of the most picturesque facilities that I've seen in a long time. You know, this crowd is just incredible. Oh, yeah. For being in the middle of nowhere, you know, you have to get off 55 at uh, exit 48 and go like five miles down the road through a whole bunch of cornfields and maybe about five different heritages stores. And then you get here yeah. in the middle of nowhere, still with good service though. Yeah. But I mean, these guys have incredible stuff. These guys are just, you know, they, they are what a state of the art facility is all about. You know, I'm not gonna name names, but I've been to some facilities that are really more C or D tier. You know, not really all that great in terms of amenities, but there's been a lot. Uh, there's been a lot that we've been to, but I have to say Clayton is certainly near the top of my list. But uh, all eyes are going to go back to Ian Gannon, the Clayton quarterback, who, after getting sacked on a third and 19, now is down on the field after being s swallowed up by a swarm of Clayton defenders. Some uh, current uh, developing scores. Delcy is leading Burlington Township 19 to seven in the fourth quarter. So Gannon will get up, but still pretty gingerly on that one. Gannon will walk off the field. Now I'm assuming it's still NFL rules where if an injury timeout is called for you, you still have to sit out one play. So that's really gonna hurt. They don't have a timeout, that's the problem. They don't have another timeout and along with that, they're gonna be at fourth down and from their own 40, it's gonna be fourth and 23, something like that. Fourth down. They're handing it off to Sims. He's still on his feet, and that is going to give Glassboro their third win of the year because that's not coming back. And the home crowd, once vibrant with life and with more electricity than a Tesla coil, has now turned silent. With one minute and seven seconds left on the clock, Clayton has no timeouts. Glassboro has won. And as we were saying, Glassboro controlled their own destiny, yeah. and they slammed their own destiny. Yeah, I mean, Gannon this year, by the way, had 147 yards passing. Only had two passing touchdowns this entire year, that being versus Buna on September the 8th. Clayton and Glassboro would both go to three and two on the year after week five. Clayton plays Pleasantville next week, followed by Maple Shade and Cumberland to close out the year. And of course, Pittman on Thanksgiving, which we are covering. Glassboro does not have a Thanksgiving game. Glassboro calls their last time out. 
but Glassboro plays Pensgrove and Deptford back-to-back home games on the 6th and 13th with Buna as their last regular season opponent on October the 20th. Again, our next football broadcast will be 10.30 a.m. Get up bright and early. Get some five-hour energy or something in you. But it's going to be Woodbury and Gloucester from Woodbury. Again, big thanks to Anthony Reagan and Dan Howie, the AD, for having us out there in Woodbury. Um, seems like back-to-back -back weeks, Woodbury's had home games with bad weather. So hopefully our uh, equipment cart doesn't get caught in the rain. But <laughs> doesn't get stuck in the mud. <laughs> Like a 67 Ford Bronco, we got to get it out. But um, no, and then after that, we are going to be 4 o'clock doing SUNY Purchase versus Salem Community College Softball in their fall scrimmage at the Jackson Adventure Complex. 4 o'clock start time. And then from the Del Castle Complex, 10 and 12 with Salem Community College versus Chesapeake College at 10. And then versus, who am I blanking? Uh, Wilmington University at 12. So truly a great game, though. I mean, do we, I don't know, there were two touchdowns, both scored by different guys. I don't know who you give the player of the game to. I mean, that's, it's not over yet, because here's a handoff to the man who scored the first touchdown, Barr, Devon Barr, and if they can get a first down here, they can truly put the game on ice and get it out of here as start of the, as a start of the Clayton, uh, Clayton student section making their way out. It's going to be second and short. 20 bar on the carry. The next week we have four soccer features starting off with Cinnaminson, Cinnaminson and Del Ran at 345 on October the 2nd. The Hun School of Princeton versus Life Center on October the 3rd. Palmyra and Burlington Township on the 4th. And then Deptford and Cumberland on October 5th. Glassboro Neals, and that's going to do it. 20 seconds on the clock. They'll let it run. 16 to 8, the final or the presumptive final here from Haupt Field. As three out of the four of us said, Glassboro would win. Vince, you were the only dissenter. You thought Clayton would win, but I mean, let's be honest. Jokes aside, this game could have gone either way. These guys played each other four times, going back to when NJ.com has records in 2010, and they're two and two. Now Glassboro has the edge in the in the. Uh, Excuse me, in the in the tiebreaker, if you will. So now they're three and two in this head-to-head -head matchup, and what an unbelievable game it was. But Glassboro, Glassboro just played their cards right. They they played extremely smart football. They had the ball. They had it in a favorable position with maybe you know six minutes left. And what was I saying? I said if they played their cards right, they would whittle down the time until they gave it enough time to where Clayton wouldn't be able to really fight back. Yeah. at least without panicking if they got in the end zone. And that's what Amari Saab did. They made it 16-8, and we're going to bring this camera right back to the booth for one last one last send-off here as it's, uh, yes, I know it's right next to the window, but we're having to work with a lot of different small capacities here in uh, Clayton. But, I mean, unbelievable, you know. Vince, uh, what a game it was as we were talking about, you know, Clayton really gave it their all. Glassboro really gave it their all. But at the end, it, it came down to a matter of who played smarter football, and that's exactly what Clayton. That's exactly what Glassboro did. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the 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 side I really got to give credit to. I mean, the the defense was holding strong all game, and especially there at the end. You know, here comes Clayton. You know, they get the return, and a, it was a beautiful return past the fifty yard line. And, you know, right there and then we're like, okay, they got a great shot. Yeah. But the thing is, I mean, the defense, obviously a lot of the momentum was going in Clayton's favor there, but the defense stood up strong and was just pushing them back. And then the, then the QB got snack, uh, sacked as well. Excuse me. So it's it kind of put them in a situation where the defense saw the momentum and just completely put a stop to it. And, I mean, right there, the, I mean, all day, I mean, all, all game, we have to say, both defenses obviously played a great game. This was, was a incredible. defensive master class. Yeah. It was incredible. And, I mean, but when it gets down to it, you know, Glassboro, they were finding the, the ways they had the edges. And when they went on these drives, I mean, they just kept pushing through, and they were just, they were finding the holes in the defense. And when they found those holes, they were definitely taking it to them and were getting, you know, good gains. Uh, once I mean once once the he got out there and was running they were finding good gains so you know I give at the end of the day both defenses they played a hell of a game and I give them you know both both sides great credit both great teams right here you know it was a close game 
Uh, 68, kind of a strange score. Both got, I mean, they both got <laughs> two point got, conversions. One, yeah, right? everybody got two point conversions. But yeah. I think what's important here, Vince, is that, you know, you don't see a lot of defensive master class games like this in no, high school football no. anymore. We were reading off the out of town scoreboard, and what did you see? Blowout, blowout. One yeah. overtime game, blowout, blowout. Maybe a two score game. The fact that this was a one score game is really a great thing for us to, to for us to have. So, yeah. you know, Glassboro, they had controlled the destiny for most of the night. They had stopped Clayton when they needed to, you know, maybe except for one blemish in that fourth quarter. But Glassboro was more dominant than that score goes to show. Even though yeah. the game was tied 8-8 with four minutes left in the, in the regulation, rather, Glassboro still had the upper hand for basically yeah. the entire game. The Saab brothers, Xavier and Amari, they did excellent out there. My player of the game is going to go to Devon Barr. I think even though Amari Saab did score that second touchdown, I think that overall from the first quarter to the fourth, if you're looking at it from a full game basis, not just from a moment to moment basis or from a highlight reel basis, then Devon Barr had the best performance and that's what we're gonna go with here on DWB. So that's where we're gonna wrap it up tonight. Clayton's making their way out in the final 16 to eight in favor of the Glassboro Bulldogs. What a game it was. We've had a nice couple of uh, great weeks here on DWB football because like I said, to start out the year, we had a couple real blowouts and part of that is my fault on scheduling and not doing my due diligence, but still, you have your good games, you have your bad games, and tonight was a good game. From everybody here at DWB, my graphics crew, Gavin Vanrell and Caleb Lane, my social media coordinator, Anthony De Palma, Donna Wilkins, my uh, uh, wonderful producer, Vincent Folks, Chris Baker and Brian Tortella out on the sidelines, and also me, Dan Wilkins. We'll see you 10.30 a.m. tomorrow, Woodbury and Gloucester, and don't forget, this isn't our only broadcast tomorrow. We've got SUNY Purchase and Salem Community College Fall Softball from the Jackson Entertainment Complex at 4 p.m. And then two more games on Sunday for Salem Community College versus Chesapeake and Wilmington University from Wilmington, Delaware. That'll do it tonight. Get some rest because we've got bright and early football on Saturday morning. Have a good one, folks.